Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells and the host of Between Taramina's on Orient Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Neighborhood Television. First day of summer, um, of course, um, MHA season is over. Um, Obviously, we're going to talk a lot about um, recapping the um, softball state finals, also girls soccer state finals. Um, we're going to break down what's going on at Oxford. I'm considering what's been going on with them. And also, we're going to talk about um, the um, basketball districts, which were released um, just last week. Um, we're going to break both districts down um, on this week's episode of the podcast here. So let's go to our main stories here. Of course, um, Rochester Adams, um, girls soccer. They end up winning a, the, the um, Division One state championship, um, keeping the trend of not winning your division, but winning a state championship. Um, it's the third year in a row the OA has done that. Um, Adams knocked off Heartland 2-0 in the um, state um, finals. Um, they got a goal in the in the 20 um they got an early, they got a goal in the middle of the um, first half um, from um, from Emily Keola. Um, and then they got a second goal um, from Sadie Rogers to put the game out of reach. She scored about four minutes ago in the game. Um, it For Adams, it was their first state championship since 1999. Um, now, of course, I have a history with 1999. Of course, that was my... Um, beloved hockey team, the Dallas Stars, they won a Stanley Cup in 1999. Um, but Adams, you know what I mean? They, they've been through a lot. I mean, obviously, you look at the stories that Adams has been through. I mean, they went through, um, you know, I mean, obviously, they saw, they saw Stony Creek win the state title in um, girls soccer last year. Um, and then two years ago, Boomby Hills came out of nowhere, um, finished last in their in the um, red, and ended up winning the Division One state championship. Um, Stony Creek, um, middle of the pack um, in the division that year, um, ended up winning a state championship. Now, obviously, you know you look at the district that Adams is in. Um, you have Rochester, you have Stony Creek, you have Utica Eisenhower, um, Utica Utica four two. Um, are all in that district, and that's a kiss of death district in its own right. Um, so you really look at what that team's been through, and you know, obviously the experience Adams has. Um, Josh Hickey, he's a very good coach. Um, um, you know, you really look at what Adams. Um, they, they, they found a way. I mean, they had they went through that gaunt that gauntlet district. Um, I think they had a knockoff New Ball Point Bay. Um and then knocked off Troy in a really crazy game in overtime there. Um and then not got by Plymouth Salem um in the state semis. And then they knocked off um and they knocked off Heartland. I mean Heartland, you know, re- Heartland's a really, really good team and you know, you really look at, you know, what they've gone through and you know, and for Adams, this is a big, big um, accomplishment for them um, with the veteran-heavy team. Last year, Adams really struggled. They really, really struggled a year ago um, to really just like, um, you know, they, I mean, like they had some really, they had, they had a lot of bad luck last year. So for them to rebound like this and win a Division One state championship, that, really says a lot to where they've been and you know for them um and and for them i mean a lot of those girls they played together since youth i mean when they were very young i mean they played together so they knew each other inside out and you know when you look at what adams did i mean it's a big accomplishment for them um you know especially with the path they've been through i mean they went through a really tough path and, you know, having that district, um, when you have the Rochester schools and the Utica schools in that district, it is not an easy district to win. And, you know, and albeit, I know they put Romeo in there, um, you know, Romeo, they've been a good team as well in there. So, 
you really look at what Adams did, um, you know, you got to give them credit. You got to give them props um, for getting out of that district, that kids at that district. They knocked off Rochester in penalty kicks um, over out Rochester, uh, which was huge. Um, the regional, they didn't have to go far. I mean, all, all they had to go was, was go on a drive to Tinkin Road. Um, you know, a little bit more um, east on the Tinkin Road um, to Stony Creek. And then they won the state semifinal in Troy. So, you know, for so you look at the, the path for Adams and, you know, say, okay, you know what I mean? Really close, um, really close. And then the nice path to get to Michigan State. I mean, and they got there. And they got there, and they ended up winning the Division One state championship, knocking off a really good Heartland team. Um, so big credit to Adams. Congratulations on their um, state championship, their first since 1999. And um, when you look at soccer next year, I mean, girls soccer, I mean, like, it wouldn't surprise me if the OA does it again next year. It really wouldn't. So, but anyway, congratulations to Adams. Um, they had a wonderful season. Um, fantastic year for the Highlanders. Um, I expect Adams to be one of the top teams next year um, in girls soccer. Um, Rochester could be in that conversation. So could Stony Creek. Um, Lake Orion could be a team to watch for. Um, Oxford, Forkston. Um, you know, they could be other, and also Troy and Troy Athens, both teams, they they could be in line to have monster years. They could, they all have, are more than capable of getting to Michigan State next year. All more. So, congratulations to um, Adams on a wonderful season. A fantastic year for them, um, giving the OA another state championship in, um, in girls soccer. Their third straight state championship as a league um, continuing that trend as mentioned, uh, not winning the division, but winning the division one state championship. So, you know, that has been that trend, especially in that division for a year. I mean, for the last three years. So, you know, congratulations are in order there. Um, let's go now from girls soccer to softball. Um, Lake Orion made the state final, um, in division one, um, they had to get by Lakeland in a wild and crazy game, 9-7. to seven. Um, When I looked at that game and I said to myself, um, who would ever have thought that 16 runs by both teams would be just absolutely insane? Um, you know, Lake Orient's offense has been really good all year long. Um, pitching's, been, pitching's been solid, um, Riley Lemberger. Um, but... When I looked at that matchup, you know what I mean? Giving up seven runs. Um, Lakeland, uh, Lakeland's a good team. I mean, don't get me wrong. They are a very good team. I mean, they can hit. I was going like, uh, this is not, I mean, like, seeing Lake Orion give up seven runs um, in that quarterfinal, I was going like, oh, boy. You know what I mean? So I'm going like, oh, boy. Because um, usually when you give up seven runs in a, in a baseball or a softball game, that's usually not pretty good. That is not good. But their offense um, clicked on all. They clicked and ended up being a 9-7 game. I mean, it was a crazy, crazy game. I mean, both teams could hit the ball. I mean, like, that was just absolutely insane, that quarterfinal game. Um, but just the, the presence of both teams can hit the softball. I mean, like, my goodness. I mean, you kind of expect, you, to, you know what I mean? I mean, Lakeland making the state quarterfinal for the first time since 2012. Lake Orion, of course, was a team that was there last year. Um, but, you know, in that game, it was very entertaining. It was very, it was crazy and nuts. I mean, like, that game was just, you know, over in St. Clair Community College um, in Marysville. Um, but that was just absolutely insane. Um, but also, I really loved in that game was they played that game at night. I mean, they played under the lights and I think that was a, had to be a great experience for the, for both teams playing a game under the lights. I mean, you really look at playing game, you know, playing at four o'clock, you know what I mean? It, it, it's hard. Um, you know, you're playing in the afternoon. You still got the heat of the day, but when you're playing a night game, you know, imagine playing a night game and, 
you know, you have the lights on, um, you know, it's, it's dark out, you know I mean? The lights are on. It is a great experience for you. It is an absolutely great experience if you're playing a game, especially baseball or softball under the lights. I mean, I know there's a few OA schools that have lights. I mean, Avondale's got lights. Seaholm just added lights recently. Um, there's something different playing a night game. And, you know, it's it it gives you more energy. It gives you more passion. I mean, like, I don't know about passion, but but it gives you more energy because, one, you know what I mean, you have the, you have the bright lights on you. You know what I mean? It's a great environment to play a game, you know, under the lights. I mean, like, you know, it's, it's a different atmosphere. It really is. And I was really happy to see both Lakeland and Lake Orion both play under the lights, um, and to have a very good entertaining game um, between both teams, um, which was absolutely insane. Um, it was just nuts. I mean, like, really, really nuts to see, um, you know, both offenses came out to play in that game. And, um, you know, Lake Orion found a way to win that one. Knocking off a good lake, a very good Lakeland team, um, and moved on to state semifinals at Michigan State on that Thursday. Um, now, looking at that matchup with South Lion and Lake Orion, I thought to myself, and I said this last week on the podcast, was if Ava Bradshaw, I mean, they're a much different team without Ava Bradshaw. They, I mean, and it's clear South Lion's a clearly much different team without her. So. When I watched that game, and I said to myself, okay, South Lions started off hitting a three-run shot. Um, no, actually, they got him. They got an RBI from Izzy Noose, um, and then that led to the three-run shot from Ava Bradshaw that gave South Lion a 4 nothing lead. Um, and then things changed. Um, Bradshaw did a, um, a celebration. Um, a celebration, um, you know, going around the bases, but then she stomped her foot, you know, at home plate, and then her left knee gave out. Her left knee gave out, and that changed everything. It changed the whole complexion of the game. Um, and you know, and Bradshaw came back, um. Pitched, uh, pitched on the mound, walked on one batter, and then couldn't go the rest of the game. You know, because of that knee injury. She had knee surgery. Um, she had knee surgery. It cost her a sophomore year, or junior year. It cost her a junior year. So, Lake Orion took advantage of um, Havana Bursette, uh, Bursette, um and she's not a bad pitcher. She's not a bad pitcher. But, you know, anytime you're going from a girl who can throw 60 miles per hour to a girl probably around 50, 55, that's a big difference. So Lake Orion took advantage. And, you know, they had a three-run inning in the second. Um, and then they scored, um, and they scored two in the, um, they scored two runs in the, um, and then they scored two runs um, to take the lead. Um, then, you know, the game settled down. Um, Limburger, I mean, I mean Lineberger settled down. Um, and then, you know, and then Bur and then Bissett settled down. Um, so it was a it was a heck of a game. It ended up being a um, it was a game change. One of the the, the big plays of the game was in the, in the um top of the sixth inning when South Line had um. Runners on um, first and second. Um, Ellie Britt. Um, obviously, we know um, Ellie Britt from girls basketball. Um, she made a big catch and got a big tag out at second. And unassisted double play. You know, that changed the whole... I mean, like, that got them out of the inning. Um, out of that inning. Um, and then, of course, the top of seventh, um, Ava Bradshaw... Um, did everything she could to get back into the game. Um, was I mean, like, um, 
you know, convinced the coaches over there and said, like, you know, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a go. You know, if we have the lead, I'm going to pitch. And, you know, obviously, you know what I mean? Like, you know, who's not to say no? So Bradshaw came up to bat in the um, top of the seventh inning. So I was thinking to myself, why would Coach Joe White tear a pitcher? Why? She just, you just gave it, you gave up three run, three run shots and we're in the second inning. So he did and got um, Bradshaw to ground out. Um, it was the second on the inning. And then Lake Orion um, got one final um, pop up um, and ended up winning that game 5 4. Um, a 5 4 has been really been like the score to watch if you're Lake Orion because they knocked off Stony Creek by that same score. They knocked off Macomb, Dakota by that same score. And now you add South Lion to that score. So, you know, and I asked myself that after that game and I thought to myself that at, at the game, what if Bradshaw didn't do that celebration? If she didn't do that celebration, is it a different game? You know, is it a different game? I mean, there's so many what ifs to that game. It really is. I mean, you know, there's gonna be so many what ifs. You know, there's there really is. So Lake Orion moved on the state final, take on 41 and 0 Hudsonville, um, which came in undefeated, had a Wayne State pitcher. And Hudsonville, I mean, like, um, Lake Orion had a chance in the bottom of the inning, bases loaded, but Hudsonville got out of that inning. Hudsonville scored three runs early. Um, that ended up being the difference of the game. Um, they ended up two extra insurance runs to win that one 5 nothing. Um, their legendary 44-year coach um, ended up getting a state championship. Um, but for Lake Orion, it was an incredible year for them. It was a really incredible run for this team. I mean, you look at the path that they've been through. You look at, you know, last year they got to the final four, ran into a very good Heartland team, um, get to the state final. Um, now you know what the expectations are now for Lake Orion softball is to get back to East Lansing. And, you know, you look at the team that they have. I mean, obviously, um, you know, they had an incredible year. I mean, it's an incredible year. And it would not surprise me next year if that team's back in East Lansing. It would not surprise me. I mean, with how good, you know, that team's been. I mean, you really look at with Lake Orion and – you know, you look at softball in the OA right now. Lake Orion is, I think, the best softball team in the OA right now. And it's not even close. I mean, they've got pitching. They got hitting. Um, you know, they 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 had that deep postseason run. Um, had a lot of experience. Um you look at the players that are leaving the program, um, graduating, um, they did an incredible job. I mean, they did a really, really good job. I mean, and I know Coach Joe White Terra, he's going to, that team will reload next year. They're going to reload next year. Don't be surprised if that team is back. It really wouldn't surprise me. Now, I'll be curious to see who challenges them next year. I mean, it'll be very interesting to see who challenges them next year. But, you know, for Lake Orion, incredible run. Had to get by some really tough teams. Really tough teams. You look at them, um, you know, and, and I'll be honest with you. The, I mean, a lot of people looked at Lake Orion and said, this team could lose to Stony Creek. Or this team could lose to Macomb, Dakota. Or this team could lose to South Lion. They played a tough schedule for a reason. They played a really tough schedule. And 
that schedule paid off for them, and it got them to the Division One state championship game. That says a lot. It says a lot. Congratulations on the for the Dragons on a really incredible year. Um, really incredible year for the Dragons. Um, I expect them next year. They're going to be back. They will be back. And, you know, yes, they're going to be a whole new team, but they have the experience. They're going to be back. They will be back. Okay, now let's go from the end of, um, of spring sports. Let's look at some off-season stuff here. Um, we're going to look at basketball districts as well here on the podcast this week. But we got a big story here out of, coming out of Oxford. Um, Will Jones, he, I mean, like, obviously um, um, took the Oxford girls basketball job um, just last month. Um, suddenly had a change of heart. Um, decided, you know, um, maybe this is not the best best job for me. Um, thank you for offering me the job. And, you know, and I'm, I'm, um, I'm not going to be coaching um, this team this season. So he decided to have a change of heart um, and is um, not coaching the Wildcats this um, upcoming season. So now this puts Athletic Dr. Tony DeMera back to score one when it comes to finding their next girls basketball coach. And, you know, now, you know, now you're in a, this is a, if you're a coach that wants to go to Oxford, it's interested in the Oxford job, it's going to be a tough sell. It's going to be a really, it's going to be really interesting to see how, you know, obviously you look at the job, um, you know, especially with what administration's been going through. You look at, obviously, the girls are still going, I mean, like, obviously you look at um, the things that have been going around Oxford. Um, you know, especially when you look at the tragedy, um, it's it's tough. And you look at you look at the talent level over there at Oxford. Um, you look at you do have um, Allison Hofstetter there. You do have Sophia Rob there. Um, Tegan O'Connor's there. Um, Mia Champagne's there. Um, um, Sarah Kopech is a up and coming player. I'm really high on um, for Oxford. Um, so they don't have a coach right now and summer ball is underway and it's not, it's not good right now. over there. It really isn't because now whoever goes in there has to take over. I mean, like has to, t- has to get everything real quick. It has to be done real quick because, you know, you've already lost a full summer, you know I mean, with these girls. You've lost a full summer, you know. So now you're going to, and you're in one of the toughest divisions in the state of Michigan, which is the red. And then you just find out your district came out, and you got a really tough district there. So... Whoever the new coach is going to be over there, um, is going to have a real tough, tall order ahead of him. Because, you know, you're going through, because you got to deal with the, you got to deal with everything going in in the program, but you got to deal with things out of the program, things you can't control, um, especially if they're going on over there, um. So when I look at Oxford's not a bad job. It's not a bad job. It's just, you know, you look at with what Oxford needs right now. And they need they need somebody who can go in there, you know, who knows the situation they've gone through. I mean, that community's gone through. I mean, they need somebody who can go in there, you know, and you look at the situation that's been going on there. Somebody who can build relationships with the parents. Um, somebody who knows that community really well. When you look at 
when I looked at when Jones was named the coach there at Oxford, I'll be honest, I was very skeptical about the hire. I was really skeptical. <laughs> I didn't know what changes he would have done. I don't know what he would have done. But I think whoever gets the job at Oxford has to know, you know, what they're going into. Has to be, you know, knows the situation that they're going to. And this community has been through a lot. They've been through a lot. And, you know, so I will be very curious to see who applies, who takes, who, um, who athletic director Tony Amaris interviews. And, you know, and obviously you look at the basketball job there at Oxford. Um, obviously, you know, you've got a very good JV program there. You've got a very good freshman program there. Middle school programs are really good over there. Um, so you're walking into a good situation. The thing I'm concerned about for the new coach is everything that they can't control. Everything they can't control. And that is the big concern I have. Whoever, whoever's walking into that, um, situation with Oxford. And I get it. There's a lot of coaches that are, um, and I get it. There's a lot of coaches, you know, you know, that are having second thoughts about that job. They're having second thoughts. But for the girls there at Oxford, for the players, um, obviously they need a coach in there that, you know, knows the situation. You know, they know that, you know what I mean? They know that, um, that knows the situation, that knows about, you know, things that are, that have been going on around the community at Oxford. Um, you know, has to embrace the community, you know? And I think if they get somebody who can do that, I think they're going to be just fine. I think, you know, you obviously look at the boys' situation when um, Coach um, Joe Fetchork, when he was um, named new head coach there, Oxford didn't even, Oxford didn't miss a beat. They didn't miss a beat. I mean, they had a great year. They had a great year, and I'm expecting, to have, and I'm expecting them to be very good again next year. You got a lot coming back. I mean, when you look at Oxford and their girl with their girls, they got a lot back. I mean, yes, they lose Peyton Richter. That's a big loss. But you return somebody to Rob. You have Allison Upsettler, Keegan O'Connor. Um, you know, coming, I mean, like, um, you have Emma Bugs. Um, you know, so there's a lot of proven talent coming back. So whoever the new coach is going to be, going to have that talent coming back. But then you also got to look at long-term talent. You know, Tegan O'Connor is going to be a junior. Mia Champagne is going to be a sophomore. Um, I'm really excited about Sarah Kopech. You know, she's a player I've really been watching. Um, I think she's, she could be in line for a big year. Um, your JV program is well-coached. Um, your freshman program is well-coached. And then you look at, you know, your middle school programs. I mean, you know, Oxford Middle School. You know, they got athletes over there. So there's talent at Oxford. It's a question for me is who's going to want the job. That's the question. And it has to be somebody who cares for the community, but also cares for the girls. That's where I think that's where it has to be with Oxford is it's got to be somebody who cares for the community, who knows the community, and, you know, is very committed to Oxford athletics. I think it's what it has to be, you know? So, I'll be curious to see what direction Athletic Tony Mayor goes. So, I'm keeping a really close eye on that situation over there at Oxford to see who they go with. Um... So it'll be interesting to see how how that search goes. I mean, it'll be really, really interesting. And it's something to really keep a close eye on. Um, considering, you know, you know, whoever the new coach is is gonna have to really go into maximum overdrive 
and you know, because he just lost, you uh, you you just lost the summer league. You know what I mean? And then, you know, do you do fall league? But you got a lot of a lot of those girls do multi sports. Um, you know, some would do multi sport or multi sport athletes. Um, so you're gonna have to put your system in real quick. So. That's going to be the challenge for whoever the new coach is over at Oxford. Um, you know, get, I mean, like, build relationship with the players, build relationship with the parents. Um, but I think, honestly, for them, it has to be somebody who knows Oxford values, who knows the community. Um, obviously, um, and if, if they find that right fit, you know what I mean? then I think Oxford, they'll be competitive for sure, but they've got to find the right fit, you know, the right coach. And, you know, for the, and for the coach who goes in there, um, you got to build a relationship with the um, players. You got to build a relationship with the parents, obviously, and also administration. If you can do that, um, then I think Oxford could be in line for, to have a successful year. So we'll see what happens there with them. And we're going to keep an eye on that situation over there um at Oxford um with the girls basketball situation. So I get where coaches are coming from there, but I also get where you know where Oxford what they need right now. And obviously I think what they need right now is, you know, obviously they need they need a coach in there. And they need um they need a um and who understands the community, what they've been going through and you know, somebody that has Oxford values and somebody, you know what I mean, that, you know, obviously, you know, can, you know, can be a big positive success within the community. So, you know, so we'll see what happens there with Oxford. We'll see what happens. Um, it's something to really keep an eye on, um, obviously, with the situation there at Oxford. So we'll see what happens there. All right, let's go to districts. Um, basketball districts were just released um, recently. Um Obviously, I talked volleyball. Oh, actually, we got one more thing to talk about. Um, Shane Hines no longer at Troy. Um, uh, he um made it, he reported on on his Twitter feed that he was no longer the um building athletic director. He was there at fi at the five years. Um, he did a great job for Troy. He did a really incredible job for Troy. I mean, he, I mean, he put Troy in a much better place. I mean, like he wrote, he wrote a lot of um. He wrote a big um, big tweet. He's made an impact with the kids there at Troy. Um, I don't know where he his um future endeavors is going to be next. Um, I don't know where he's going next, but but he left his mark at Troy. I wrote a column on it. Um, <laughs> it's on um, it's on my blog here at Saginaw Bay forty six fifty at blogspot dot com. Um. I'm going to really miss Shane. I'm really going to miss him. I mean, he did a really great job at Troy. Um, you know, and I think that, you know, you know, he was put in a tough spot, but he really blossomed. He really, he grew with the job. And, you know, you know, I know you, I knew him really well when he was at Clarkston, um, but he did an awesome job at Troy. He did a awesome job there. and. It's sad to see him go. Um, it's really it it stinks to see him go. Um, and I'm gonna miss that kid. I'm gonna miss him. I mean, like he's he's what he did at Troy was absolutely incredible. He set up basketball games. He set up football games. He was there for the kids. Um, he was he was the he was in a, in a role model of students. I mean, you know. Just a great, great individual. And he fit what Troy, he fit what Troy wanted. And, you know, and, and it's unfortunate that, you know what I mean, that he was let go there. It was unfortunate. I wish him nothing but the best of luck um, in his next journey. And I hope he gets an athletic director job soon. I think he would do a excellent job. Um, with Troy. I think he would do an excellent job um, somewhere. And I think, you know, whoever gets him is going to get a hardworking man 
um, who knows everything, um, role model in the community. Um, you know, so with Shane, um, with Shane, um, I would say to him, thank you. You know what I mean? I would say to him, thank you for what you've done to Troy. Um, and he's done a wonderful job there. So, but I wish him nothing but the best of luck over there at Troy. Oh, oh wish, wish him the best of luck going forward. So, see what happens. We'll see what happens. But I wish him all but the best. Um, let's go to basketball districts now. Um, they just released these um, last week. Um, obviously, the boys districts. Um, we're going to go boys first and girls. Um, when you look at the districts that were announced, um, we're going to start off um, with um, District 22 over at Livonia Franklin. Um, a big storyline here is Greg Gray's here. And Greg Gray's transferring to Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, that's a big loss for Farmington. And it was confirmed on the Z Zone basketball Twitter page that Greg Gray's enrolled at Farmington. Uh, enrolled out Farmington, now Birmingham Brother Rice. So it's a big loss for them. But, you know, you look at Farmington was a much different team without Greg Gray's. Um, when he when his presence wasn't there when he got hurt, um, they didn't have him in their district final loss to Redford Thurston. Um, they didn't have him when um, you know they when they didn't have him they really struggled. So you know it's a big loss for Farmington, but it's a big upgrade for um, Coach Ricky Palmer and Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, so the reason why I look at District Twenty Two is you got a district here with North Farmington, obviously a team that went to the state semi state final last year. For Coach Todd Negotian, um, Farmington, um, you got Livonia Franklin, Livonia Churchill, Livonia Stevenson, and Redford Thurston. This will be at Livonia Franklin. Um, North Farmington, they do, they don't have, they lost some talent, but knowing Coach Todd Negotian, he'll have his team ready. He'll have them ready. Um, Livonia Churchill should be better. Um, Redford Thurston's a team that. They got some experience coming back. Um, Livonia Franklin, as I mentioned, um, they should be better. Livonia Churchill had a really rough year a year ago. Um, but I, I really think right now, if I had to put a team that had to be favored right now in this district early on, I would have to say Farmington, North Farmington. Um, then I'd put Redford Thurston in that conversation. But I just don't think that Redford Thurston matches the intensity that North Farmington would have in that district. And, you know, so we'll see how that one goes. But if I had to do an early favorite in that district right now, it'd be North Farmington. Um, district 24 at Groves. You got Groves, Seahome, Oak Park, Booby Hill, Stafford Arts, and Tech, and Birmingham Brother Rice. This is a little different considering last year. I mean, Seahome moves in this district. Bloopy Hills comes in as well. So does Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, you know, you bring, I mean, like, a and is also in this district as well. Um, Birmingham Brother Rice, they, they're on a mission here when I look at Birmingham Brother Rice. And they have a, I mean, like, Brother Rice, you know, they return a lot of experience. When you look at players like David Williams, Elijah Williams, Jacob Lamb, Jeremiah Coffey, um, Trevor Smith, Logan Hanama, and John Lilly, all coming back. Um, Greg Gray's, as I mentioned, when um, he, he tra he's transferring in from Farmington um, to go along with Sebastian Thrower, who transferred in from Louisiana. Um, they got, um, they got um, Landon Echoes, who also is coming in as well. Um, so when you look at Birmingham Brother Rice, they're loading up. They are loading up. Groves should be very interesting. I think Gro I mean, obviously Groves has the big three, John Simpson, Josh Gibson, Paul Hubbard, along with Landon McKinney and David Jones. Um, Groves is a team that I think can challenge Birmingham Brother Rice, but I just don't know if they got the depth. And then on the other side, you got Oak Park. Um, Oak Park, they should be better. They should be better. They're one of the favorites in the whites. Um, but... Like I said, Oak Park's got the same problem that Groves has. 
if you're going against a team like Birmingham Brother Rice, you're going to have to deal with depth. You're going to have some depth issues. I mean, Birmingham Brother Rice can go at least 11, 12 deep when I look at this lineup. They can go 11, 12 deep. Um, Bloompia Hills, I think they're going to be improved. Um, I like what they've been doing this summer. Um, you do have um, Deron Mason, Philip Muhammad, Carter, Carter Harfield, Carter Canfield. Um, Brendan Byes is an up-and-coming player. Um, he'll be really be counted on that post in the interior. Um, so Bloomy Hills could be a player. Seaholm, basically having a very young team. New coach and Spencer Adams taking over. Um, so they're going to have their hands full. They're going to have their hands full. So we'll see how that one goes there. I mean, like, but, you know, but right now, Birdman Brother Rice has to be their early favorite. Followed by Groves. And then Oak Park's your sleeper. District 25 at West Bloomfield. You got West Bloomfield, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, Lakeland, Wall Lake, Central, Wall Lake, Northern. Um, it, this looks like this is going to be West Bloomfield, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's again. I mean, both teams are loaded. Both teams are deep. Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, defending Division One state champions. Um, Wall Lake, Central looks to be the dark horse again. Um... But Orchard Lake St. Mary's difference that game last year was West Bloom. They exposed West Bloomfield's depth, and they're deep again. I mean, you look at that team, and you know, I don't have to say the names much. I know who they are, and I think a lot of people in the state know who they are. So Orchard Lake St. Mary's, they're loaded. They're loaded, but so is West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield's loaded as well. So, we'll see what happens. District 26 at Lapeer. You got Oxford, Lapeer, Davison, Grand Blank, Storch Creek, and Holly. Um, Grand Blank right now, I, I would have to say, is the early favorite, but can't count out Davison. Can't count Oxford out. Can't count Holly out. Holly, they're my dark horse. They're one of my dark horses. I mean, I love what Coach Steve DeHart's done over there. Um, with the Bronco, With the Broncos. Um, they've done a wonderful job with that program. They've done a wonderful job with that program. They've done an absolute wonderful job. Oxford, you look at the, the experience they got back. Um, Jake Champagne, Luke Stuffin. Um, they've got um, you know, you got Robert George, Nolan Mauser, um, Coltrane Hudson, Bre Brennan Elling, Parker Benyon, Kane Smith, Jonah Lundberg. Um. Coach Fed's got that team rolling right now. And you look at the Summer League right now, they've been on a roll right now. So, and they're in the white. And they could be one of the player, one of the, one of the key players in the white this year when you look at it. Um, Oxford could be a really interesting team to watch in this district. Davison won 17 games last year, upset by Holly. Returned, I think, probably one of the best players in Greg Lawson coming back. Lapeer's got a new coach. Um, Jack Chetto comes over from North Branch. Um, obviously, we know what he's done with them. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Shorts Creek, they got some experience coming back. A lot of experience. Um, so, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Shorts Creek, um, they, were, they won six games last year. Should be better this year. So, we'll see what happens with them. District 27, I call this the group of deaths. Um, you got Abendale, Clarkson, Lake Orion, Waterford, Kettering, Waterford, Mott. Four teams can win this district. Four teams. Waterford, Mott's got a lot back. Um, they got the majority of their team back. Clarkston, Clarkston, I think, is going to be really interesting. They added um, Ace Walters, um, who transferred from Birmingham, Brother Rice. Um, I mean, like, and then you put him together with them. Um, Doug Schoenfield, Hayden Barrow, Caleb Harmon, Andrew Caldwell, Chas Borderline, Alex Mochensko, Braden Weeks, Quinn Rosenberg, Hayden Flavin, Cole Charter, and John Call. Coach Tim Wasilk has got something over there. He's got depth. He's also got depth. Then there's Avondale. I mean, Avondale, their guards are scary. Their guards are scary. You play like Jordan Bush, Jordan Clayton, DJ Moody, um, Michael Callow. I mean, like Isaac Gordon, 
I mean, then you have a very good big and Justin Greer Sykes coming back. They'll something. They'll be something. And then Lake Orion, obviously, you look at the players they got back. Um, Zach Parks, Ryan Lushow, Gabe Scott, Nick Galvin, Jackson Shosky, Nate Jackaloni, MJ Long. Um, you know, you look at the Nearings, um, Max Nearing, Joey Nearing, Stephen Butcher, um, for Coach Jose Andradas. And then you have Waterford Kettering, um, well coaching to Coach Steve Emmert. Um, so when you look at this district, all these teams got depth. They go at least 10, 11 deep. That says something right there. That's why I call this district the group of deaths. Because I think this is going to be the group of deaths. It's loaded. Real loaded. I mean, Clarkson I had been the fair, but I have water for Mott, the top seed. I mean, Lake Orion, Lake Orion, I mean, like, Lake Orion, I think, can win at least 18 games, 18, 19 games this year. And I think they can, and, and right, they would be the four seed. That's how nuts this district is. That's how nuts this district really is. I mean, Water Vermont's going to probably be the favorite in the, in the um, Lakes Valley. Um, Clarkston, Avenel, you know they're going to be battling for the red. Um, they're going to be battling in the red. Lake Orion, you know, I think it's one of the favorites in the white. So, we'll see how that goes. District 26 at Rochester. Got Rochester, Adams, Stony Creek, Utica, Romeo, Utica, Eisenhower. Adams should be the favorite. I mean, Utica won this district last year, but they lost a lot of talent. They lost a lot of talent. Um, Rochester, I'm curious to see. I'm really curious to see how Max Mall does along with Jake Tandy. Um, Stony Creek, I think if there's a team that I think has got more, most pressure on anybody, it's Coach, um, it's Coach Owen's team. I mean... Coach Jeff Owens team. You've won nine games in two years. That's not easy. When you when you have the change of culture, that's not an easy thing when you really look at it. Um, so they're a team I'm watching. Romeo, I, I don't know if I can trust Romeo right now. Utica Isar has got a new coach and Anthony Muskrat taking over that team. I think he'll do a really good job there. Um, but they're gonna have a very young team. So, right now when I look at that district, Adams has to be the favorite. I mean, who they got back for Coach Isaiah Novak. Um, you know, they got they got some key players coming back. So, we'll see what happens. I mean, anytime we turn both Langan Brothers, Colin Clark, uh, Trenton Lagarde, Luke Marcel, and Cannon Flynn, that says a lot. Really does. District 29 at Royal Oak. You got um, Royal Oak, Troy, Troy Athens, Berkeley, Warren Mott. Troy has to be favored here because of Mason Parker. Um, Berkeley could have a strong say, even though Berkeley beat Troy last year in double overtime. Now I'm saying uh, both teams are going to be a little bit weaker. Royal Oak, I, I, I can't trust Royal Oak. I can't trust him. Even though they got home court, I just still can't trust Royal Oak. I, I can't trust him. Um, and then you look at um, Warren Mott, I don't think it's going to gonna contend in this district. I'd be I'd be surprised if they do. Troy Athens, they have a new coach in the Mitchell Versilio. Um you do have Nathan Piggott back, you have Liam Dempsey, Nate Appledorn, Brennan Tucker, and Alex Bullion coming back. Um Troy Athens will be competitive in this district. They will be competitive. But if I had to give like an early favor right now, I would have to say it's Troy. Um then it's Berkeley. So we'll see how that one goes. District 60 at Warren Lincoln, at Hazel Park at Ferndale, Ferndale University. Hazel Park, Detroit Osborne, Detroit Pershing, and Warren Lincoln. Kind of odd, the two, um, two last two state champions are in this district. Ferndale and Warren Lincoln. Lincoln won the district last year. They're favored again to go to win it all the way. You do return, they have a lot of talent coming back. Um, they do have um, Demarion Bozeman, Marcus Blackwell, Moses Blackwell. Um, Chris Morgan, I'll say Johnson coming back. Ferndale counters with Eaton Vineyard, Torino Adams, Cameron Frazier, Dakar Washington, Tyler Ruth, Julian Carnes, and Dexter Wilson. So, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that one goes. Um, we'll see how that one goes. So, 
you know, Detroit Pershing, they're, they're going to be very interesting to watch. Um, see how that one goes. Uh, but for Warren Lincoln right now has to be the favorite in this district. They have to be the favorite. So we'll see how that one goes. District 61 at East Point. Got Harper Woods, East Point, Harper Woods, Chandler Park, South Lake, and Thunderline. Thunderline has to be favorite in this district. They got a lot back. Won 14 games last year. I oh, know East Point won 14 games district crown last year. Sunderland won 21 games last year. Got a lot of experience coming back. So, Harper Woods will have it tough. I mean, Harper Woods, they do got some key players coming back. Um, Myron Bear, Jay McDonald, Curtis Brotag. Um, we'll see how that one goes. We'll see how that one goes. Then District 62 at Pontiac. You got Pontiac, Northern Prep, Troy Country Day, McCoy Luther North, um, Bram Cranbrook, Kingswood, Mass Nice, Lampier. Northern Prep and Detroit Country Day should battle it out. Um, but it'll be very interesting to see how this one goes. It, it will be really, really interesting to see how this one goes. So, those are my early thoughts on the boys' districts. Um, let's go to the girls' districts here. Um, District 22 um, at Laboni Stevenson. Got Farmington, Farmtails Mercy, Laboni Franklin, Laboni Stevenson, Redford Thurston. Mercy should be the favorite in this in this district. Um, got a lot coming back. Um, Lavonia Stevenson, new coach, and Allison Heidi taking over. Um, so that'll be really interesting to keep an eye on there. Um, Farmington, I just don't know if they have enough experience. Enough experience, they're going to be the favorite in the gold. So they'll get a lot of points there, but I just don't think that. Um, the question for me with them is going to be is competitive balance, and I think that's going to be the challenge for them. So we'll see how this one goes. We'll really see how this one goes there for them. Um, But Laboni Stevenson, they're a scary team to watch Um, in that one. But this district here um, is going to be the um, Farmtails Mercy's district to lose in that district. District 23, um, Oak Park's in this district. They got the Trent Renaissance, Trent Mumford. Can Tramick, Warren Fitzgerald. Renaissance is favorite in this district. Um, Warren Fitzgerald, I have him as my um is my next team competitor. Muffers my dark horse. Oak Park is gonna be really, really tough for them in this district. They're gonna be better, but they're gonna have they're gonna have it really tough for Coach Heather Washington. It's gonna be really, really tough. <laughs> um District 24 at Birmingham Marion. Um Grove, Sea Home, Bloomby Hills, North Farmington. A and T and Birmingham Marion are in this district. Um, you know, when I look at this district here and I think to myself, um, Birmingham Marion's gotta be the favorite. You don't have a coach in there yet. Um be curious to see who goes in there and takes over that program. Um, they do have some key players on that team. I mean, Mar Marion's got a lot of talent coming back. Um Seaholm's got a lot of experience coming back as well. I think Seaholm, I think they're a team I'm really high on. a t got experience back, but I just don't trust that how, uh, I don't trust that defense one bit over there. Um, Groves, new system under Coach Jessica, Pro Pro I mean, like, under um, Coach Jessica, um, so Prochek taking over that program. Oh, uh, Jessica and Dubla taking over. Um, Boopy Hills have a new coach this year. Um, and then um, North Farmington, they don't have a lot of talent over there, but knowing Coach Michael Lawlin, he'll have that team ready to go. Um, so we'll see how that one goes. But Birmingham Marion right now has to be the favorite in that district. They have to be. District 25 at West Bloomfield. They got West Bloomfield, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, um, Wall Lake Central, Wall Lake Northern, and, Wa and White Lake Lakeland. Um, Northern, um, watch out for them. They could challenge. Um, they got Amal Yoon's back. They got experience back. West Bloomfield, they got Ava Lord, Sheridan Beal, Gamble Jones Sisters, Jordan Ratliff, Jalen Head, and London Hall for Coach Jeremy McAllister. But Orchard Lake St. Mary's, they got a lot of talent coming back. I mean, they they were in D2 last year, lost a tough one to Goodrich. Um, Coach Brad Crichton, I've seen them in summer ball. They got a lot of experience. You got Players like Mia Moss, Stella Puda, Layla Stewart, Allie Crichton, Ava Agala, Jessica Amson, Hope Richter, Brooke Shockey, um, Nicole College, Reese Holton for Coach Brad Crichton. I mean, it'll be really interesting. 
But if I had to give an advantage to a team right now, it had to be St. Mary's, what type of team they got coming back. District 26 at Shorts Creek. I got Oxford, Davison, Lapeer, Holly, um, Grand Blank at Shorts Creek. Um, Grand Blank's a favorite that went to the state final last year. Oxford, as I mentioned earlier, it all depends on the new coach and can the new coach, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know, they they've got to be all on the same page. If they do, I think Oxford's a very dangerous team. Um, Davison, I can't trust Davison one bit early on here in this district. I really can't trust Davison, but I think this is right now a two team district between um Oxford and Grand Blank. So we'll see how that one goes there and that one there. Um, District 27 at Avondale. You got Avondale, Clarkson, Lake Orion, Waterford, Kettering, Waterford, Mott. I think this is still a two-team district between Clarkson and Lake Orion. Um, Avondale is a sleeper. Um, they could pose some problems. Uh, but when I look at that district early, when I look at it, I mean, both Clarkson and Lake Orion got a lot of talent coming back. Um, also, both of them are in the red. So, And we know how comp competitive that division is. So we'll see how that one goes there. Um, District 28 at Stony Creek. You got Stony Creek, Rochester, Adams, Utica, Utica, Eisenhower, and Romeo. Um, Utica, Eisenhower, I think, has to be the early favorite who they got coming back. Stony Creek, you know, they got that experience, um, but they did lose Sarah LaPrie. That's a big loss for Coach Columbus Williams and his team. Um, so that'll be really interesting how that one goes. Rochester, they got the same issue. They got a new coach named Andy Telpe taking over. You got Alice Max, Kyler Robinson. Guards are guards are an issue for them. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens with them. Adams, Faye Zolas is there. They could surprise some people. Um, I think they're better than what the record indicates. Utica got a new I mean, the Utica obviously has had a new coach. They struggled last year. Should be better this year. So Utica, so when I look at this district, it's a tough district. But if I had to pick right now early, it would be Utica Eisenhower. And I know a lot of people at Sony could be really upset me about it, but but right now I have to say Eisenhower because of what they got coming back. District twenty nine at Royal Oak, Royal Oak, Troy, Troy, Athens, um, Berkeley and Warren Mott. Um, Troy has to be the favorite here. Look at they got back. Look at they got back. Royal Oak they had that deep run the regional final regional last year. They could challenge as well. Berkeley's my sleeper in this district. Um. You know, they got a lot coming back, uh, but there's my sleeper. Troy Athens is another one to watch, and I don't know about Ward Mott. I just think they're going to really struggle in this district. So we'll see that one, what happens there. District 60 at Hazel Park. We got Ferndale, Ferndale University, Centerline, Hazel Park, Mass Heights, Lampier. Um, Ferndale's favored. They got to be favored. Look at who they got back. And then their eighth grade class coming in. I mean, their freshman class, when you look at talents like Zara Richardson, Janelle Turner, Mackenzie Turner, Kenny Ch Cassidy Chain, and Zyra McRae for Coach Keith Paris. And you put them with that team that won 17 games last year. They're in the red this year. That's going to be more of a challenge for them. But they took on some good teams. I mean, like, um, you know, when you look at the teams they played. But I think it's going to be – the red's a different animal. for, And I think Ferndale's going to see that, probably experience that. But they should be favored in this district. Um Happy for them, they're not having to deal with Birmingham and Detroit Country Day in that district. If not, that would be really, really tough for them. So, we'll see how that one goes. But Ferndale's the early favorite in that district. Massachusetts Lampier's got a lot of experience coming back. So, they could challenge Ferndale in this district. District 61 at St. Clair Shore, Salt Lake. Got Harper Woods, Chandler Park, Salt Lake, um, Warren Regina, and East Point. Um, Warren Regina's the favorite with the experience they got coming back. Harper Woods is next in line. Got Chandler Park. They got experience as well. Um, I think Regina's got a great chance here to win this district um, when I look at them on paper. So we'll see. Harper Woods could cha should challenge. Um, we'll see what happens to them. But um, but it'll be very interesting to see how this one goes. But Warren Regina has to be the favorite right now. Harper Woods, Chandler Park Academy. They're my dark horse team to watch. And our last district here at Pontiac Northern Prep. We got Pontiac Northern Prep. Waterford Oakdale Prep, Birmingham Detroit Country Day, Blue West Cranbrook Kingswood, and Macomb Lutheran North. Um, Country Day is loaded with proven talent. As I mentioned, they're going to be on a mission after losing last year to, on the buzzer to um, Detroit Edison in the regional finals. Um, Cranbrook Kingswood is going to be their biggest challenger. 
But come to door North, Pontiac North and Prep or Sleepers. Pontiac, Waterford Oakdale Prep, new school. We'll see what happens with them. And then Pontiac obviously didn't field a team last year in the postseason for Coach Christopher Wright, but they got a pretty, pretty good team coming back. So Pontiac's a team to really watch for going forward as we head into um, the um, district. So those are the basketball districts that were released. Of course, I had the blog at second number 4650 at blogspot.com for latest information around the OAA. Awesome. We're going to start talking to some football coaches um, starting next week. We're going to talk this, see how everybody's been doing this off season. So we'll see what happens. So make sure you follow the blog at second number 4650 at blogspot.com for latest information around the OAA. We'll see what happens going forward. We're going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. Right, take care. See you, see you all next week. God bless. All.